energy of 8 p.m. I normally uh, come here or I go anywhere, they know I am here. They have their prayers uh, with us here and I want you to know they love you. They wish we had a chance to meet together, but it won't be long. God is going to grant us that opportunity. Amen. Amen. Today, uh, let's go straight away into what God has for us. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord and Amen. it will be like um, a Q without a U. So let's go into his word and I'm reading from the book of Matthew, the first um, gospel writer here. I will read um, and see what I have. Amen. I'm reading from chapter 20 and I will read some one or two verses also 37 and also 38 and 37 amen okay let me read for your hearing um, the gospel of Matthew chapter number 24 it reads this way from verse number three. As he sat down upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? and of the end of the world. Verse number 37 responds, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. The Lord responded aloud, Amen to his way. We pray, eternal God of heaven, Lord, there was no time that we gathered that you were not present. There's no time that we were present that you didn't deliver your word. I want to say today, your people are here hungry for your word. We you know that there's nothing that can sustain us, for man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of your mouth. We want to hear what proceeded out of your mouth to bless your people and to keep them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Today, I want to deliver the word of the Lord to you. Simply, here comes your prophecy. Prophecy is about the mind of God. God made a man in his own image. But there are certain qualities that man don't possess like God. That makes him unique. He is the only one that has those things. And one of the things that God has that a man don't have makes us men is that we don't know it all. We don't know it all. We don't have all the answers. And particularly, we don't know the future. So all along, humanity have been, have been struggling to find out what the future holds for us. We have always been troubled about what tomorrow is going to be like. And when we even come to the presence of God, we still seek for certain answers that we don't have. So today, if you look at the terrain, the spiritual terrain, even the saints of God, we are going from one church to another, from one preacher to another, trying to seek certain answers of our, for our future. Hence, 
prophetic industry has become a what? A hot cake in Christendom. If you can come here and say tomorrow is going to be like that, the next day is going to be like that, you are going to have twins. Somebody said he wanted twins. If, if somebody had told him that, it will be even more appealing. So, people have taken advantage of it. They know the minds of the people. They can, they can just focus what you are seeking. And so they take, and they take you for a break. All we do is that we start talking about things that we don't know and they were telling us what will be affecting us even for the future but here comes your prophecy my bible started by saying the book of chapter 24 of matthew it talks about the signs of the end time it talks about the signs of the end of the world equally to say after we've gone past this life or after we have to go into the other side what will be the ultimate things that we are going to face jesus as he sat down people came to him this is not a new thing. It is something that affects even the, prof, um, the apostles. So the question that I did, they asked was that, how shall these things happen? Tell us. We know you will come again. Some of us don't believe that Jesus will come again. We believe it, but we don't actually receive it. But the word of the Lord, if you go down to 35, it said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall be forever. Whether you believe it, you don't, it won't change anything. What God has said is certain and sure. It must come to pass. It must be. Today, many of us as preachers have been prophesying things to people and to churches that don't happen, that don't come to pass. Thanks be to God. In the scriptures, it's plain that if you go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8 in 22 says, if a prophet had said a thing and that thing did not come to pass, that is the very thing that the Lord did not say. He spoke it presumptuously. He presumed in his mind. He thought about it in his mind. He was cleverly, he fashioned it amen. out of his own. Amen, amen. But it's not from the Lord. Hallelujah. But man can receive anything. But what God has said is certain and sure. Whether we believe it, whether we like it, whether we don't, God's word must come to pass. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But yet, I think we all need a prophecy. Your pastor also need a prophecy. Every one of us, I also need a prophecy. Every preacher needs to hear from the Lord. Every, it's not a bad thing to be looking for the Lord for answers. The problem is that we must be sure whether God is in it. So, the people said these things. So they wanted to know, the two said, um, when the people came unto him, the disciples, verse 1 said, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples, uh, and me, the church, or the people of God, some of a Christian family, Pentecostal church, they approached him, they came to him for to show him, to show them the things and the buildings of the temple. And instead of doing that, he said, See ye all these things. Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon the other. 
that shall not be thrown down. Hallelujah. You see, all the things that we see, when I talk about the souls are the building, according to the Bible, I don't know whether you understand me. The souls of the building are, it says, you and I, we are the, the church. The Bible is saying that these things, all of these things are going to be, at the end, they won't be there. You will be there, but your, this, your, your stone here, what do we call it? Your body here will not, cannot sustain. If we don't leave this building, we cannot be with him. For God is a spirit. They that worship him, they that must seek to live with him, they that must seek to be in that kingdom, it's a spiritual kingdom. They, this flesh cannot inherit um, spiritual things. It's corrupt, but the incorruptible shall inherit incorruptible. So these things, as he came as a bomb, then he went ahead and explained that, look, and he said that, um, the people wanted to know what the end is going to be. And he said, as in the days of Noah, the, the same shall happen at the end when he is to come. We always come to say, Jesus is coming. There are churches that bear Jesus is coming soon as a name. But are we really ready for him? This time, in the, this, let's take a look at the days of Noah. What was the situation? Here comes your prophecy. The, in the days, the olden days, the Bible said there came a generation that did not value the Lord, that did not believe the Lord, that were so much involved in material things in earthly things, we were so consumed. And what we were thinking about is about drinking and eating, partying on the left, partying on the right, marrying. So some of them even go to us and not even marry. We have friends. So all that we're looking at is the things of this world. We do not regard God. The book of Genesis chapter 6 says, and God found out that um, his spirit could not strive with man continually. He decided that he has to wipe away this earth. And why did he say that? Because he said it came to a point that God couldn't take it anymore because when they wake up in the morning, when they wake up in the noon time, at evening, in the midnight hour, while they are sleeping, all their imaginations and their thoughts are continually corrupt. They, all they thought about is sinning. And people were magnifying sin. So let me pause a little bit. So if I understand what the Bible said in Genesis, the days of Noah. And I look at today. Is it the same thing that we are seeing? Something happened over the weekend. Normally, um, I was some, um, some people, they don't know me. Before you know it, they said something. I look at this thing, and I saw a man of God. He traveled, some of you might have seen it, a clip where a whole cathedral in England, amen, a whole cathedral in England, which we believe that the more in their Christianity, they are proponents, the British and the American, they would have been the people that empowered even Africa for Christianity. So it will be something, it's something you can, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable, right in the face of those giants of faith. 
a very cathedral. God gave them every opportunity. They captured lands. They captured, um, you know, money. And they built cathedrals for God. God loved it. They try to serve God. There we have all of the John Buyans, John Wesley, and the top, top reformists. They were prayed. They did revivals. It changed the whole nature, nature of the system of worship in the Great Britain. They didn't know any other God. It almost became a state religion. Every, almost everybody coming from that end is a Christian. They have done a great work. Let's put our hands together for them. Today, if they will have to return here, all the monies that they had, they did not buy limousines. They did not buy aircraft. They did not think about trying to make mansions for themselves. But they thought about God. If they live, they live for God. If they die, a great gain, they are transcend transcending into heights of bliss. So they did not so much care about what this world is thinking about. So they gave all to the purpose of Christ. They built, God help them, they built a cathedral. This man of God walked by, he saw that people were what? Drinking. Prostitutes were, half, were almost half naked. They were just, I mean, stooping up, down, down, up and down. In that particular thing, you can't believe it. But that is really what actually happened. To me to see Christian family, they have this auditorium. This auditorium, if we don't come here, nobody will come here and say it's a, it's a church. Amen. Amen. It can be considered as anything. But that one, right from afar, from a distance, you can tell, this is not a place for anything but what? For men to come and pray. So, I was so amazed to find out that right in the, in, in the center of faith, those people that we trusted, the people that we confided, the people that brought light to us, their grandchildren or their, their sons, they've allowed this to happen and they don't see anything wrong. I now understand the book of Genesis. So daily in the morning, in the evening, in the afternoon, when they go to sleep, when they rise up in the morning, all that they are thinking about beer, all that they are going to think about what? Party. All that they are thinking about um, flirting with women and men. Is that all that they can do? Offer to God. Is that the reason that God brought us here? How long can we continue like this? My Bible said, these souls that you see, it won't be long. Not one shall be here. Amen. Amen. At least let us learn a lesson. A year ago, the world was shaken by this virus. We said we, we are so technologically uh, in, uh, so advanced, but we could not stand the face of just a simple thing that happened to us. It keeps, it keeps us on our toes to tell us we are humans. We, are, we have no knowledge. Our knowledge cannot survive when calamities, when God withdraw from us. We can't make it. Until now, we are still briefing whether this virus is gone or not. I know this church is doing well, praying in the morning. That we know that no solution cannot come from this. The vaccination. After the vaccination, something can still come. Let me tell you, we here, we are not an exception. In what I saw in England, it's just a little a tip of the iceberg of how people that are called Christians. This didn't, if this had happened in Dubai, if this has happened in Afghanistan, or even in the northern part of Nigeria, or northern part of Ghana, I will probably have a little bit of what for them. But this thing happened in a place where there's no anything like any type of worship than Christianity. <laughs> so what are they showing in the world? Nobody is worried. They feel so much, you know, 
encouraged. They feel happy. They feel enhanced. That sets me to a time that we are forgotten. The Lord came because we reached a place God saw that without him there will not be um, salvation for us. God gave us hope. God gave us light. Jesus is the light. He's the bread of life. Not your spaghetti. How many times have you, haven't you had spaghetti? And all of the pizzas. And all the fufus. And the orbono soup. And other things that you have been consuming every day. But that, after you finish, you go back to your square one. But this is the bread that can, when you eat, shall never harm. Hallelujah. When we come to the house of God, many of us are sealed the same hardened. In this particular area, the Lord said, look, the time is, the, in the, in the, the signs of the time will be that the, one of the things he wants, we do shall have false prophets. Let no man deceive you. Deception is on the right. And start right from our pulpit here. Straight away. Very dangerous. But that is the truth. So it calls for endurance from the saints. Those who are to listen and be able to stand, you will not listen to the word of God and still become a bed forever. Then you see, you are still vulnerable to the attacks of the enemy. We must now become men. We know white from black. We know left from right. But we just kind of sit down here looking at our uh, telephone and then still sleeping around. Some of us still even have girlfriends in the house of God. Some of us still have other type of worship in the house of God. They have about two, three churches. They come here in the morning, in the afternoon they go to the other church. If we are not, we are that much unstable. We cannot test we cannot stand at the coming of the Son of Man. It's going to be a shake. And to those who don't have faith, who are not grounded in the faith, will not survive it. If you have to survive, you must think deep. Now some of us are in the house of God. All of we are thinking about, oh, I will start a church. This pastor cannot do it alone. I also can preach. We've done so and we are still not learning the lesson. Not all people that are preaching are going to be pastors. Not all good preachers, even good preachers, will even translate into good pastorate. If you are a good preacher, that doesn't translate into becoming a good pastor. A good pastor is a different thing. A good preacher is another. So if I can preach more than my pastor, my preacher, it doesn't mean you are going to be... No! God has given some pastors in the ministry. Yes, sir. God has given some evangelists in the ministry. Yes. Prophets in the ministry. Not every pastor is going to pass prophesy. Not all prophets are going to pastor. But we must learn a lesson. We all have a, a place. We can be members of God. A Christ in the, in the house of God. And still make it to heaven. And when we go to heaven, I'm not going as what is a pastor. When I go to heaven, I'm not going to take my seat as, what do we call it? As some kind of bishop. No one of us will be. There's only one pastor in heaven. The head pastor, the chief shepherd. All of us are going to be saints. So what is important is that I might seek my place to be a servant of God in heaven. So that's why I call you brothers. You are my brethren. You are no anything higher than a brother. And we must be confident. We must, uh, we, we, we must be satisfied. Just making it to heaven is very important. Hallelujah. So let us learn this lesson. There are more to say. Let me tell you that the apostles, the, the disciples at the time, they saw that the world before it ends, they're going to be a shaker. But at least so Corona should have given us an idea. Many of us still now, we don't know that our monies will not survive. 
our houses, or not, your wives, or your, your twins, excuse me, you see, will not survive. <laughs> Sometimes, if you don't have something, you think when you have it, you, are, you will not need anything anymore. I remember when I, before I, I haven't worked, I say, well, when I get, when I get to work and I can receive, you know, and I'm more meant to take care of myself. I was thinking about certain things like food that I couldn't buy. My mind, when you were a child, you would think as a child. Lo yeah. and behold, when I had job and had money, the food that I want to buy was there, but I, when I have it, I don't even need it. <laughs> Some of us are craving. It is a good thing to marry. It's a good thing to have children. But all these things that we are talking about, they come with all its weight. It comes with a grave responsibility. Many of us are not ready. You want to be a pastor, it's a good thing. You want to be a bishop, it's a good thing. Even an evangelist, being a minister, it's a good, the Bible says, he that seeks those offices, you seek for a good thing. But it doesn't come without a price. Are you able to bear the price? Have you thought about it? Having children, many children, or even two children, do you think many of us might end up going to hell because of even that? Many of us would have gone to heaven without becoming ministers or pastors. Let me tell you, our brother Moses could not enter into the promised land simply because he became the leader. He became the leader. Hallelujah. Tell us. Hallelujah. If he were a simple brother, if he were a simple brother, if he, he brought up Joshua and Caleb, they were able to make it. Why couldn't he make it? He had what it is. But because he took another mantle on, which was Ancora, a weight. Some people, when they are running a race, they, they have certain type of coats on. No person who is running a race, he wants to put a coat like what I do. You have to take it off. If you have a singlet, you will do better. Yeah. And that is why some of us are trying to see for certain things. We are not ready. Let me say that, brethren, um, the apostles, they asked for a greeting. And the Lord said, um, as it was in the days of Noah, I've explained to you the spiritual situation. The people did not like God because they thought that they had everything. They thought that they didn't need anything. So all they thought was that, oh, God has blessed them with a wife. But, but some people, when they marry, they don't come to church anymore. Some people, when they are seeking for husbands, they start coming to church. Some people, when they are seeking for children, they start coming to church. They're going after preachers to tell them, help them to, to, to have a child. After they have their children, you are the pastor or one minister says, Oh, we didn't see you today. Uh, you know, my child, my child, I didn't even have anybody to leave. <laughs> but if he's working, he would not say that. If that lady is working, she will not say because of children, she didn't go to work. But on Sunday, to come to church, now the children that he suffered, she suffered, will not allow because he wants. He's trying to let the pastor or the church leaders believe that she has a case because she has two, three children, didn't have anybody to leave them to. That's why it's a legitimate answer not to come to church. So, in the days in which we are, it's a very hard one. People, many of us, even our tight, our tight. There's a simple barometer to test your spiritual, your spiritual strength. Why can't you give what God, what belongs to God? They say you are going to uh, this place, and then this brother here, what's your name, brother? Jeremy. And then I'm saying, that, oh, you are going to this particular place, uh, Jeremy's house. Oh, let me give you this amount. Um, you yourself, you want to go there? I give you a bus ticket, and I give you okay. Have this thing for. I just want to give it you for um, a dash. But as you go, they give this, uh, I mean, give you 100 euro. But when you go, out of the 100 euro, um, 80 is for this guy. Or 80 is for you, but 20 is for Brother Jeremy. You went there, and then after you went there, you didn't even give him. If you hadn't, hadn't gone there, I would understand. You went there. If you didn't come, I would understand you. But you actually came to Brother Jeremy. 
and you have them ready. They're giving them a whole, a whole big 80 euros, only 20 to give to him. Then you were so much smart, as you, according to your reasoning. According to Alice, you were so smart because the man could not actually know that that man was giving. He squandered it. And yet we say God hasn't done anything. We're looking to go to heaven. How can the thief go to heaven? You he wanted to become a, 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 a deacon in the house of God. How can the thief be right now? You haven't reached a deacon. You have started stealing. Uh -huh. And some people even have, I mean, uh, have taken advantage. After being even ministers, they can pass it. They still steal. I don't understand spiritual. Can you steal from God? Can you be wiser than God? Brethren, I don't think I have to continue because I have a lot to do hereafter. But I want to say that here comes your prophecy. The Lord is coming whether you like it or not. Whether you are prepared or not, it won't change his coming. But that's the very good thing is that we've been told. We, want, we don't know what the future will for, but to us, it's no longer a secret. God has spoken to us, he will come. Some people don't believe because it's started. But he's coming. If you know he's coming, then he was fair to us. All you need to do is that. Do your little preparation. So why can't we? You want to keep money. You want to keep your strength. So in the instead of come church, you are able to go to your job. You are sleeping in the house. People are praying that people, you know, this church will be full. And then you are sleeping. So are you helping the cause of Jesus Christ? But you know that has no matter amount of time will give in, in sleeping the house will give you rest. They that are what are weary and are heavy laden, they must come to the Lord. Good rest is from Jesus. Hallelujah. My brother. You say you are sick. Sleeping the house will not heal you. And even if you you were healed by hook, I mean a chance. Sickness go and come. That's why I'm not afraid of what we call it Corona. corona. I don't think Corona is the last Sickness. pandemic. I don't think so. But if some came and gone, and this one was so deadly to stop the whole world, then I think the one that will come probably is going to be more deadly. And I cannot trust in every anything. I cannot trust in my government, my president, whether I'm in Europe, I'm in Africa, the corona did not spare nobody. The other one that will come will not spare anybody. In the days of Noah, when the calamity came, it did not spare Africa. It did not spare Europe, Italy. It did not spare those that were in the United States of America. The Bible said God, when he came, he swept away everybody with all our material that we've acquired. He took them all. So we went in vain. Amen. Can we make it? Can we make it to heaven? The Lord is coming. The Lord is coming. Amen. I think you are, you are not sure. Amen. I'm not sure. Amen. It's possible. Yes. The only thing is that you must keep on running the race hard. Amen. 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 Your prophecy, the whole prophecy, don't go after people asking, but the best prophecy is that if you don't have life, whatever you're looking for will not stand. First, seek ye first the kingdom. And everything that you're talking about, whether the prophet said it or not, God will bring it to you. Amen. You don't need prophet. All you need is listening to his word. That, that said, I'm, I'm not saying that prophets are, are not good at all. But I mean to say, the one we seek will not help us. Let the Lord speak to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 The days of Noah, it will be the same. Today, in the days of Noah, we did not hear, hear that they even had girlfriends so said they were given in marriage. And they even married. In our case, it is even perjo. We are even having girlfriends. Even in their time, they didn't have boyfriends and girlfriends, which even pastors are having girlfriends. 
and we are still very good, comfortable with it. And think that nobody has seen it, and we're going to make it. And the church is also saying, ah, but I'm just only a young man, even that minister, oh, that deacon, he, he has a girlfriend. Why not me? What have I done wrong? In the days of Noah, our own is Ankora is devastating. Very devastating. Yes, people are becoming, girls cannot marry today. Women cannot marry today. They, they will never marry. They will always become girlfriends, boyfriends, only because they want to cheat one another. No one wants to be one taking advantage of. They are afraid of themselves because of our character. But God bless them. God bless them. God bless you all. In Jesus' name.